Hey guys, it's Heather and I am here to show you how I paint my bath bombs. I'm going to see if I can get you set up well right here. That's probably good. There we go. Okay, let's hope that works. Uh, I am going to be painting these bath bombs. So I have my little painter palette here and some 99% rubbing alcohol. And I am going to start with these because these are my um, fresh tweed bath bombs. They smell wonderful. And uh, I'm going to use a turquoise colored blue mica on them. And what I'm going to do is just put a nice little slash of color across the top. One, it will be pretty when you put it in the water because once you, um, once you put it in, that color on the top will be one of the first things to dissipate into the water and add that kind of flash of color. And so I'm just going to take it and just sort of a pretty little slash of blue and maybe kind of slash it out a bit. I just want a pretty design, very simple. Because the way I look at the green Irish tweed or yeah, green Irish tweed, it, uh, it doesn't need a lot to make it really pretty. And it helps that these bath bombs have little ridges in them. I don't know if you guys can see the little ridges. But they, um, I'll get some pink on that one. They add a little to the design as well. And I am also going to um, paint the other ones with different sized brushes. Like I said, with this one, it just doesn't need a lot to make it pretty. But I thought this would be something nice. I can kind of get on here, maybe talk to you guys. I know it's still a little bit early. But for those of you watching, hi, thanks for coming. Make sure I get all the spots. There we go. I have been a bath bomb making fool for the last couple of days and I'm going to continue to be a bath bomb making fool for a little bit longer. But this is what I've done today. So I thought I'd go ahead and paint them. And the mica doesn't really color the water. It disperses when it hits the water. And it makes it really pretty in that actual foam. But that's kind of all it does. The real color comes from a water-soluble dye. And it's blue 1 and yellow 5. I love this color from Handmade Soap Making Supplies, and it is turquoise blue. Oh, and I'm running out here. I gotta make some more. Now, the purple ones that you guys see, they're black raspberry vanilla, and they are decorated with lava salt. And so I don't really need to put anything else on them. Okay. 
Now these pink ones that are over here, I am coloring them with an Egyptian red mica. And I'm going to do a test first and then see if I need to add any um, red pigment to it, like a neon red. But I really love this Egyptian red. It's just this really deep, pretty red. There we go. Not pink, the orange. Sorry, I think I said pink earlier. See, it's just a pretty, pretty color. And since this is sweet orange chili pepper, you just want that nice, deep red color in there. And I am making just a couple of slashes of color on both sides. Just to give that So what do you guys have going on today? Anything in particular? What have you been making? This is a great way to add some pizzazz to your bath bombs. When you're painting them, you do not want to let it sit for very long in one spot because then it could potentially become um, a little too saturated and you'll get bubbles that will pop up. Let's see if this design would work at all. I think it's kind of pretty. Super pretty, really simple. Especially if you're making a ton of bath bombs, because I've actually been doing this for a while today. And uh, it can get exhausting if you do too much. But these are pretty. Okay, I like that design better. I'm trying to get it to where you guys can see what I'm doing, but where I can actually see what I'm doing too, because I can't always. Now you can be really detailed when you're painting on a bath bomb. Now, if you're gonna be really detailed, you need to make sure that your bath bombs are fully, fully dried because if they're not dry enough, they will um, fade, sorry, or start to crumble where you paint them. You don't want that to happen. 
There we go. But you can get really detailed. I have seen people paint full scenes on their bath bombs. Um, I saw this beautiful work on Instagram, and I could not tell you who the name of the artist is, so I apologize if you guys know, let me know. But she paints on her bath bombs, but like her cherry blossom bath bombs are painted with cherry trees. Um, if it's a flower, she has that flower painted on her bath bombs. I mean, she's extremely intricate, and it is quite beautiful. But the key for that is making sure that you are, one, I use alcohol, not water. Water will make it fizz. And two, make sure your bath bombs are really, really dry. It took me forever to really learn how to make bath bombs. And uh, once I finally did, I fell in love with them. I have made flat bath bombs where I can really, really paint pretty designs on them. I've painted snowmen, Christmas trees, I've painted flowers. But my favorite are kind of abstract designs that have a feeling for what they are. It's one of those things where you have to um, work through if you want that time and expense that it is to paint them that detailed or if you want to be able to sell them. Next up, I'm not sure if this one's going to work going to kind of test it and see. This bath bomb has jojoba beads in it and it's actually a really 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 pale green. I have this beautiful sunset shimmer that is white. I just want to see if it will add like some shine to the top of the bath bomb or if I would be better off dry painting it on. See that shimmer? It's really pretty. I think it's coming off better in person than it is on the, the screen because it's just these really pretty shimmery spots. Um, and then once I finish this, what I plan to do is melt down some cocoa butter and... Um, make a drizzle to go on top of these pink ones and I'll use cocoa powder and a little umber mica for that yeah I wish you guys could see the shim there you can see a little bit of the shimmer but it's super pretty And I don't want to overdo it because I kind of like the simplicity of this one. And those jojoba beads are quite beautiful on it. It's almost like a leather dust. Being painted on. But it's super simple appeal to plain bath bombs. Although I think just plain bath bombs are quite pretty by themselves. Um, if you guys are watching for the first time, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
uh, a little spot there. That will be a tester. I have found something really cool. These little containers here, they are wax melt, individual wax melt sampler containers. They have little lids that pop on the top, but I found they're perfect samples rather than going through and making tiny circles. I'll show you one of those here in a minute, like little gumballs. They're kind of perfect for giving out samples. And you can even staple your leftover. Then they're easier to package because the little ones can tend to get dinged up pretty easily. And this keeps that from happening. Okay, let me make a little bit more. So I am taking just like that and spraying it all and then mixing it up. And that's how I mix my colors. And I have a bunch more, but I made these and wanted to get them painted because I have to do my photography for my website and I needed at least a full completed batch of bath bombs. If you don't like to paint your bath bombs, there are lots of ways you can add interest to them. Um, you can do things like that's decorating that. Oh, there's a little lava salt on this one. That's black lava salt um, right here. This is my patchouli rainbow and it has a botanical mix on the top of it to add to its interest in the pretty of it. Okay, next up I'm going to melt down some cocoa butter. And add it to my, uh, add some umber color to it and a little bit of cocoa powder and make a drizzle. Sorry guys, I'm actually looking through my little mini stack of sample colors because my umber if that doesn't work then i'll just use straight cocoa butter and cocoa powder oh. okay so what i'm gonna do is take my cocoa butter and i'm gonna kind of cut it up a bit kind of shave it down so that it will be easier to melt. And you really don't need a bunch. A little bit goes a long way. A bit of cocoa butter to keep it kind of fluid. And while I am melting that down, I'm going to add my glitter for the other bath bombs. Now I have a bunch of different glitters that I can use. I like to use intergalactic on these yellow bath bombs because they're called rainbow and the intergalactic glitter has quite a bit of different colors in it. 
So the first thing you do is you take your alcohol, spray the tops of your bath bombs. And that kind of wets them a bit. And then you just sprinkle your glitter over the top. Let me move you over so you can kind of see the sparkle. Fritz them again. Sort of set the glitter in place. Now this is almost melted. I don't want to melt it completely because I don't want it to get grainy. And I'm going to add my cocoa powder. bombs. See it right here. Let it get nice and melted in. Now you can thicken this by adding um, and make it fizz by adding baking soda and citric acid to it. But I really like just being able to drizzle it. And you just sort of drizzle it across the top. You can pipe it to do this really messy way, which would be just to lay them out. And then you take your mixture and you just drizzle it across all of them. And that's definitely doable, but I want more of a chocolate covered sort of design to these. instead of the drizzle. And that cocoa butter will solidify and the coconut oil that's in it will just absorb into the bath bomb. So it just has that kind of dripped and dipped quality to it. Now you can also do a really cool thing where you take your butters, your cocoa butter, you add in your um, whip it into kind of uh, almost a lotion-y sort of consistency. And you can pipe it on. You can add your citric acid and your, oh, don't fall over, your citric acid and your baking soda, make it really thick and make it look almost like a frosting. And that's super pretty. That works great if you're doing almost a fizzing bath melt on top, but that usually works better if you have a divot in the top of the, I don't want it to be over a melt doesn't work well because it will melt the cocoa butter instead of just shrink wrapping over it and then it makes it not as pretty. Oh, that one's almost perfect. Using cocoa powder adds to that fragrance and makes it really nice. And doing them individually one at a time helps me to keep it much neater, a lot less cleanup. When you're not making. And all of these bath bombs will be re re uh, blah, blah, blah. So for my February release. I'm going to add more to this one. I 
I kind of like the drizzle, but I like this better. There we go. And I'm going to look and see if there's any other ones that look like they need just a little bit more anywhere. Like that one could definitely do with the drizzle there. That's pretty good. And then, like I said, I have these adorable little bitty containers. And then you can take it and just sort of spread it onto the top. Oh, it flipped over, you guys. Sorry. See if I can fix that. There we go. Technically, you could pop these out and then put the mixture on the bottom so it really does look dipped instead of But this works for the cute little sample. And I'm pouring what's left on top of them. And then I'm just going to spread them out. And this will be a little tester that I keep at home because it's small. But that's really it for now, you guys. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I know I have. Um, I have one more set to put glitter on. So I'm spritzing these. And I have my cute little nurture soap spritzer bottle and add a little bit of life to it like that really really like it and I was deliberating on if I wanted to do I really think I do on my orange chili pepper ones I'm going to use some red glitter and sorry if my hand's in the way, guys. Make sure that I'm hitting every single one of them. There we go. I'm going to spritz it so that it sticks. And the beauty of once they're dry, that spritzing doesn't make them like uh, it would if they were still really wet. It would have little marks all over it. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, you guys. I've pretty much done all of my painting. Um, other sample options for these cute little containers other than bath bombs. I took my bubble scoops and put my bubble scoops in them. Um, I cut them in half and put them in there. And then um, you can do lotion in it because it really does clip closed really nicely. I think I got mine from Amazon. But yeah, they're pretty cool. And uh, I'll give you a good view of these that we painted today. And that we colored and decorated. They don't. Usually, at least mine, I have a dehumidifier. Maybe that helps. But mine, when I spritz them, when they're fully dry, I have not had a problem with them warding. Now, if they're still sort of damp and I spritz them, I've had them ward. Um, like these, they have a few little spots on them. And that was where I spritzed them when they were not fully dry yet earlier today. Um, I have found that over time, if I spritz them every once in a while, um, it seems to make them harder. Now, of course, that could be my climate rather than um, the, the spritzing itself. So maybe if there's more humidity, it would kind of wart up a little bit more. But so far, I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and it also helps with stuff like this, like the lava salt. Um, I had 
this one kind of rolled over when it was drying so some of the salt came off but i found that if i keep sort of spritzing the top and it's a really really light spritz it will hold the salt in place um what i used to do is take a melt and pour and kind of dip it and then dip it in the salt but it's way easier to put the salt in the mold when i make them kind of same with the flowers um but yeah that's it for right now, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave comments down below. Share it. Like it. Let me know what you thought. And uh, I guess this is Heather from h and Artistry. And I wish you guys luck, love, and a great rest of the night. Bye, guys.